Hi everybody, how are you doing? My name is Miss Krista and I want to say welcome to our fourth week in November. This is the kids service. So if you are in grades one, two or three, you are in the perfect place for your weekend service. How is it going? You know, today is the first day that it snowed outside and at my house there was some big excitement. In fact, there was even some singing going on and it kind of went like this. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. And that makes me think of the perfect opportunity to tell you a joke. <clears throat> I love jokes. So here is one for you. Just in case you might be outside building anything in the snow today. You ready for my joke? Here it is. Where does Frosty keep his money? In a snowbank. <laughs> oh, it's a good one. Hey, do you have a good joke about snow? I hope you do because I would really love you to send it to me. Send it to my email and maybe I will choose your joke to tell next week. So my friends, do you remember what we've been talking about this month? You're right, we've been talking about gratitude. And remember, this is what gratitude means. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. You know, um, there's been lots of opportunities for us to express gratitude this month. And sometimes I think that we kind of forget um, maybe the things that we have instead of thinking about the things that we don't have. A couple of weeks ago, I mentioned the idea of a glass and I'm gonna show you one today. Can you see my glass? If you were looking at this glass, would you say it's half full or would you say it's half empty? You know, sometimes when we look at the world, we think about our life, how we see things either half full or half empty, kind of affects how we feel. And so today's story, we're gonna be hearing about a couple of different people and how they had an experience and the way that they looked and felt about the experience changed how they felt in their heart. So I want you to listen to that story and think about gratitude and I will be back afterwards. We're also gonna have some worship and the dance moves are so great this month. I hope you'll get up off your seat and make some dances. And I will see you afterwards for some follow-up. Okay, see you in a few minutes.
the Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 through 15. While Jesus taught in many different ways, he often shared the most important truths as stories. He used the things and animals and situations in people's everyday lives to help them understand things that were bigger. One day, Jesus explained to his closest friends what the kingdom of heaven was like, and he used a story to help it connect. Now, if he told that story to us today in our world right now, I think it would go a little something like this. There once was a man who owned a large vineyard. Here at Grape Escape Vineyards, we specialize in red, white, and green grapes. One bright autumn day, the man called in his manager to find out how his harvest was doing. It's doing grape. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. We shall pick the grapes immediately before the beetles nibble them up. That's some good raisin in. The next morning, the vineyard owner rose while it was still dark and hurried to the center of town. He arrived at around 6 a.m. and there were people still standing around noshing on grape jelly muffins. Are you looking for work? Yes, indeed. How much do you pay? One hundred dollars for the day. Precisely perfect. Let us proceed. The owner led the workers back to his vineyard. Baskets, hats, uh, don't squash the graves. Oh, well, what happens if we do that? They might whine a little. The vineyard owner wanted to be sure that the beetles wouldn't ruin his precious grape harvest, so around three hours later at nine o'clock, he returned to the town center and found more people lined up for work. You come pick grapes for me. I'll pay you well. Good deal. Let's go. The workers were all picking as fast as they could, but there were still long rows to harvest, so the vineyard owner went back to the town center at 12 o'clock noon, three hours later, and there were still plenty of workers standing around. Come, help out in my vineyard. And after the new set of workers had worked for three hours, the vineyard owner returned to the town square again at three o'clock. Need some more grape pickers, you in? The blazing sun beat down as the vineyard owner added the new workers to his crew. One of them had hired at dawn, wiped sweat off his face as he sipped his water. Showing up for work in the afternoon. What a terrible work ethic. <sighs> The first workers returned to picking grapes, filling basket after basket. But even though it was still five o'clock, the vineyard owner returned to the town square where he still found plenty of people hanging around counting cockroaches and looking bored. Why have you been standing here all day? No one like hired us. I'll hire you, come work in my vineyard. For the final hour of the workday, everybody pitched in. Whew. As the last baskets of grapes were brought up, the owner called to his manager. Just look at all these beautiful grapes, all freshly harvested. A great job, if I do say so. Pay the workers. Start with the ones I hired last of all. So the manager pulled out his cash box and lined up the workers. He started with the ones who only picked grapes for an hour. Here you go, $100. Like totally rad, man! At the other end of the line, the workers who began at dawn began doing some quick math. A hundred dollars for one hour of work. Huh. That means we're about to get over a thousand dollars. The manager continued to hand out pay packets to the workers who started at three o'clock. One hundred dollars. And noon. One hundred dollars and nine o'clock in the morning. One hundred dollars. Huh, okay. By the time the workers who started at 6 a.m. reached the front of the line, they were getting a little bit um, worried. You're paying us what's fair for working all day, right? Yep, one hundred dollars. What? Preposterous. The early morning workers stalked off to find the vineyard owner. 
You pay those hooligans who only worked an hour the same as us, even though we sweated all day picking your grapes. Just look at this crispy sunburn. Friends, didn't you agree to $100 for the whole day? That is a technicality. Do you feel cheated because I gave so freely to the other workers? Don't I have a right to do what I want with my own money? But it's not fair. Take your money and go. I want to give the ones I hired last the same pay I gave you. The early workers glared and skulked away, cash in hand. They had let the owner's generosity to someone else ruin their day. Jesus' story made it clear. God gives freely to everyone. Rather than focusing on what you don't have, adjust your attitude. Choose to look at what you do have. God is generous to everyone. Every one of us has received awesome things from God. And even though that should make us feel happy, sometimes we look at the stuff that we have and see what we don't have instead of looking at what we do have. And you know what that means? That means we need to adjust our attitude. And that's today's bottom line. That's the one thing to remember today. So I'm gonna bring it up on the screen so you can see it too. Our bottom line today is adjust our attitude. Let's do a little practice on what it would mean to adjust our attitude. What it would mean to think about something that could happen in our real lives and how we have to make a choice to find gratitude. So this activity is called Find Gratitude. What I'm going to do is read out something that could happen in your real life. And when I do, I want you to pause the video and take a moment to think about and then maybe talk about whoever is in the room with you, what you could do or how you could find gratitude in that situation. Does that make sense? All right, here's our first situation. You wanted to play outside, but it started to rain. So you're gonna pause the video and then have a conversation with the people in your room. And then we'll move on. You were going to watch a movie at home, but the power went out. You wanted pizza for dinner, but you're having broccoli cheese soup. Number four, you wanted a puppy, but your dad got you a fish instead. What about this situation? You studied all weekend for a test and got a C grade. Your friend didn't study at all and got an A. Has this ever happened to you? For your birthday, you got $10 from your grandparents. They gave your brother $15 for his birthday. And our last situation is your friend got a new bike, but you share an old bike with your brother. So if you're ever having a bad time and a bad attitude, if you're ever having trouble feeling grateful, I'm gonna challenge you to think about all that God has done for you. Take time to sit and think about all the good things that you have. Think about how much juice is in the glass and not how much juice is not. You know, in my house, there was recently a disagreement about how one sibling had to eat all of one of the vegetables and the other sibling didn't have to eat all of those vegetables. And that seems like a super silly situation, but this happens all the time, right? And sometimes we just need to remember the things that God has done. You know, sometimes things happen to us that we don't feel like we deserve. And for me, I try to remember what Jesus did for me. He died on the cross for me to save me. And Jesus didn't deserve that. He was perfect. He was God. So if Jesus didn't deserve all those things, 
then it's pretty likely that I'm going to get some stuff in my life that I don't deserve, but that does not change that I should be grateful. So that's, I want to remind you about today's bottom line again, and that is this, adjust your attitude. That's right. Be thankful for the things that you can be thankful for. And I promise you, when you're looking for things to be thankful for, you won't have room inside to be thinking about the things that you're not thankful for. So to help you with this, I'm going to give you a little assignment. I'm sorry, Miss Krista, did you just say that I have homework? No, 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 it's not homework. This is just something to help you practice gratitude. I have a little sheet here. I'm going to bring it up on the screen. Mums and dads, families, this is what it looks like. If you have a printer, you could print this out. And if you don't have a printer, that's okay. You can write down on a piece of paper or on several pieces of paper, thank you God for, and start looking around for the things in your life. Maybe you could do one of these um, exercises each day this week. Find something to be thankful for and write it down. You know, my friends, I would love to see all of the things that you're thankful for. Would you do some of these for me and then put them down, take a picture of them and send them to me so I can have a look. I think it would be awesome if I could see all the things that you're grateful for and then maybe if I get lots of pictures, I could share them with everybody and you could look at all the things that everybody is thankful for and that would help us to be happier and it will help us remember how great God is in our lives. Okay, my friends, I think it's time for us to pray. So I'm going to send us now to my friend, Miss Leanne, who's going to pray for us. And I will be back with some announcements. Hello, everyone. Miss Leanne here. Hope you are staying safe and healthy. Please put your hands together. Let's pray and ask him to give us an attitude of gratitude. Dear God, it's so easy for us to focus on what we don't have, and then we start to complain. Please help us adjust our attitudes so we can be grateful for all that you do for us. Help us see all the good things in our lives instead of complaining or feeling jealous of others. We love you, God, and we pray this thing in Jesus' name. Amen. What are all the things that are going on that you need to know about? I'm so glad you asked because I'm going to tell you in this weekend's announcement. The first thing I want to say that is this. On Saturday, December the 19th, I hope that you and your family, maybe your friends, your neighbors, maybe some extended family members will come to North Park at both the Fanshawe and the Huron location because we are going to have a Christmas Story car rally. We are going to be doing sort of a drive-through of the Christmas Story and we hope to have you there. There will be lots more information coming up soon and you can check that out on our e-news and our social media platforms, but stay tuned for more information on Saturday, December the 19th car rally. Also, I hope that you are getting excited about Christmas because starting on December the 1st and every day thereafter until Christmas day, we are going to be posting a two minute toothbrush talk. That's right. You're going to be able to hear from some really cool people. Mm, okay, me, maybe I'm not so cool, but some lots of cool people. And we're going to be sharing with you the story of Advent. And it's just two minutes long. It's just the right amount of time that you could be listening and maybe watching while you're brushing your teeth and maybe getting ready for bed or brushing your teeth and maybe getting ready for school. And then we're gonna leave you with a question at the end so that you can have a chat, a conversation, a discussion with the people around you. Maybe your brothers and sisters, maybe your family members, moms and dads, grandparents, um, small group leaders, whoever it is in your life. 
um, to have some interesting conversation. Um, number three, if you are in grades four or five, we are having another grade four or five fun night. Um, this month's installment is going to be online. Um, so shortly you need to go online and register for the online event. We will meet you on Zoom on Friday night, November the 27th from 6.30 to 7.30 um, online on Zoom. So please get registered just as soon as you can. There are lots of things that are um, going to be going on around North Park around the holiday season, so please stay tuned, stay connected. If you're listening to this and you um, are not receiving our e-news or you're not receiving the midweek review and updates that come from me um, or, or other things that you could be registered for like our prayer ministries, um, our care ministries, then please go to northpark.ca slash subscribe and you'll be able to see a list of all the different ministries that you could um, receive updates for. Those ministries will send emails to you and you can just stay up to date with everything that's going on. So I hope you will stay connected. Check out uh, families if you're listening, check out other um, opportunities to be connected um, during this season and in the time to come. Listen, I hope you have a wonderful week. Enjoy the snow um, and I will see you next weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.